Hi, and welcome to this Monday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. I hope you had an absolutely terrific uh, Easter weekend. We certainly enjoyed our Easter weekend. Our uh, church put on an Easter pageant, and uh, Debbie and I both had a role in that as uh, narrators, and so we were busily involved in helping with that project on Friday and Saturday night. Very, very uh, rewarding, good turnout, very generous response from those who came to uh, the pageant presentation that our church had made where we celebrate the story and the message of Easter that he has risen. And when you think about it, you know, the bottom line for us, the bottom line for me anyway, and I think it's the bottom line for all of us as believers, is very simple. I am a Christian because of one thing, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That is the foundation of of my faith. It is the rock on which my faith rests. That is an objective historical fact. It is a, an objective historical event with abundant eyewitness testimony and no rational alternative explanation. There simply is no rational, credible alternative explanation to the empty tomb. So our faith, you know, we're often accused by people on the left of taking this blind, irrational leap of faith to come out where we do, and the reality is exactly the opposite. Our faith is rooted and grounded in the stubborn historical reality and fact of the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ from uh, the dead. So I had a great opportunity to participate in a presentation of those great truths, the story of the life of Christ, uh, very... Uh, exciting to be a part of that event, very rewarding, and uh, we were just very grateful to be a part of that. Uh, enjoyed great table fellowship yesterday afternoon with uh, fellow believers, watching the NCAA uh, basketball and all that, so it was a great uh, Easter weekend for us, and I hope it was also for you. Now, in um, my reading in Scripture, I've been meditating and reading and pondering on portions of the book of Jeremiah. Again, as you remember, we've talked about this before, and we're just about to the 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 end of the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a man of God that was raised up to speak truth to power, to speak truth to the politicians and the people of his day, and to call them back to a relationship with God. They did not heed his appeal, his warnings, his instructions, his teaching. Judgment fell. Babylon came. The city fell to the Babylonians in 586 B.C. They destroyed the temple. They burned the city to the ground. They carted everybody off into captivity for 70 years before they came back to the land. Now, Babylon was raised up, and here we see something about the way in which God directs the affairs of nations. God had raised up Babylon to serve as his agent of wrath and vengeance against his own people because of their stubbornness, their rebellion, their idolatry, and their disobedience. I think it's entirely possible that God used the attackers of 9-11 that they were agents of his wrath to try to get our attention, to uh, awaken us from the slumber of our idolatry, our disobedience, our rebellion, our rejection of all of God's standards. So this is what happened to Israel. Babylon was raised up as the hammer that God used to bring his wrath down on the people of Judah who had rejected and refused his message for decades, even for hundreds of years. But... Here's the end of the story, because Babylon exceeded the parameters that God had established for it to be an agent of justice. God now pronounces judgment on Babylon. Babylon is taken. Bel, who is one of the gods of Babylon, is put to shame. Merodach, another god, is dismayed. Her images are put to shame. Her idols are dismayed. And even later in this section tells Babylon this is a prophecy that Jeremiah has given, and it is for the nation of Babylon. In other words, if they paid attention to this prophetic word from Jeremiah, they may have been able to prepare themselves for the eventual destruction that comes because Jeremiah tells them in this section who it is that will destroy them. It's going to be the Medes, going to be the Persians. They're the ones that are going to come and destroy Babylon. But they ignored the word of Jeremiah just as the people of Judah had done. And this would be a day of rejoicing and return for the people of Israel 
when Babylon is judged, the people of Israel and the people of Judah shall come together weeping as they come, and they shall seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion that is coming from Babylon back home with faces turned toward it saying, Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will never be uh, forgotten. So he goes on to describe the kind of judgment that's going to fall upon Babylon because of the wrath of the Lord. She will not be inhabited, but will be an utter desolation. Everyone who passes by Babylon shall be appalled and shall hiss because of all her wounds. This is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance on her due to her as she has done. And then God says, look, this time it's going to be a judgment on Babylon because of their wrath and their violence against my people. I'm bringing the Medes and the Persians in to judge them. Judgment will fall on them. And I will use the Medes to judge Babylon as I use Babylon to judge my own people. But he says there is an upside for the people of God when this judgment falls, when this catastrophe falls. He says, as a result of this purging and this disciplining hand of the Lord, in those days and in that time, declares the Lord, iniquity shall be sought in Israel and there shall be none. And sin will be sought in Judah and none shall be found, for I will pardon those whom I leave as a remnant. Uh, they, their Redeemer, speaking of Israel, is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He will surely plead their cause that he may give rest to the earth, but unrest to the inhabitants of Babylon. Babylon, he says, is going to be left desolate, and you go there today. I mean, one of the things that Saddam Hussein set out to do was to rebuild Babylon. Didn't get anywhere. It is still a desolate ruin, windswept, nothing but a haunt for jackals. And the purification of the nation came through catastrophe and hardship, and that may be the future for America. It may be that we're going to have to experience the kind of catastrophe that fell upon Judah in order for us to get our, God to get our attention and for us to return with our hearts to him. Well, let's pray. Sovereign Lord Almighty, I pray for myself this day, for my wife and my children for the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk, for President Obama and all of our elected officials, for every man, woman, and child in the United States. And I pray that by the work of your Spirit, we all will turn our faces toward you and seek you, even in tears. May we come and bind ourselves to you in an everlasting covenant that will not be forgotten. I pray that we will always recognize that we are like sheep and that you are our true pasture, our hope and the hope of our fathers. May our appetite be fully satisfied in you. I pray that you will so forgive us that even if search is made for our guilt, there will be none. And if search is made for our sins, none will be found. We know that you are against the arrogant and the proud and that the arrogant will stumble and fall with no one to help him up. We know that you will punish those nations who sin against you and oppose you and who proudly defy you, the Holy One of Israel. And so I pray that we all will humble ourselves under your mighty hand, that you may lift us up at the proper time. Be our strong Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen.